Welcome to the second session of uh, the Bioxel Building Blocks um, lecture on the Bioxel Summer School 2021 edition. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the computational biomolecular simulation workflows uh, using these Bioxel Building Blocks. Um, remember, we are in the second lecture, second uh, introduction lecture from the uh, BioBB library. The, and remember also that tomorrow we will have a live session. Uh, where we are going to run together a tutorial of, on a protein uh, ligand complex molecular dynamics setup uh, with a Dromax and a Jupyter notebook uh, um, interface. <clears throat> we are also um, having a, a couple of uh, query and answer sessions uh, tomorrow. Uh, one for the um, doubts that you have on all the theory and introductory sessions and one another one for the at the end of the session for the uh, tutorial and hands-on okay um so previously i hope that you still remember from the previous lecture uh the basics of the uh, bioxel building blocks library so the idea is that uh, we um, have developed the library which are uh a collection of python wrappers on top of biomolecular simulation tools these wrappers are uh, giving interoperability to all the different tools so that we can use them and join them together, building our own biomolecular simulation workflows that then can be uh, launched and run using different workflow managers, such as, for example, a graphical user interface uh, called the Jupyter Notebooks. And I hope that you're familiar with the Jupyter Notebooks, but uh, if not, uh, I will try to introduce you uh, why we are using the, the Jupyter Notebooks and uh, the powerful and useful uh, tool that uh, they are. Um, remember that we have a website where you can find all the information that you uh, that you need to uh, start using the Bioxel Building Blocks library. In particular, you have an about section where you will find all the information that I gave you in the first introduction session. Um, but also you have a couple of uh, sections that are also really important. The first one is the tutorial section where you will find basically a set of tutorials to install Anaconda uh, packaging system in your system, no matter if you have Mac operative system, Ubuntu or Windows, um, you can uh, install the Anaconda package system. And then just, it's the only software that you need to reproduce all the workflows that basically are in the workflows tab. Uh, workflow section of the website. All of these workflows, we implemented them for you, are demonstration workflows uh, using Jupyter Notebooks, and you can download them and execute them in your own uh, local infrastructure using the Conda uh, system, or you can just execute them in Binder. We will take a look at that in this, in this session. Um, the important thing here is that uh, from the different demonstration workshops that we have, the protein a small molecule complex molecular dynamics setup using Gromax is the one that we are going to uh, uh, use tomorrow in the live session, in the hands-on session. <clears throat> okay, why are we using Jupyter Notebooks? Why we chose Jupyter Notebooks for our demonstration workflows? Uh, I will try to convince you that uh, Jupyter Notebooks are really a very powerful and useful tool uh, in general for training because uh, they have the possibility to run the different cells in the workflow uh, step by step. You can run one cell, uh, check intermediate results, modify, interactively modify parameters here, run again the cell, see what are the differences, modifying just one parameter or one input here. Uh, inspect intermediate results, in not just the text or the log files, uh, but also structure in 3D, interactive 3D, but also plots <clears throat> of different analyses. And also on top of that, you can run it in platforms, remote platforms like uh, MyBinder. I'm going to introduce you that uh, uh, in a minute. And, then, and uh, uh, using this MyBinder, you don't have to install anything in your own computer if you just want to start trying and playing with one particular workflow and see what you can do with the workflow and uh, by Excel building blocks library, you can just run it remotely, uh, play a little bit. And then if it is interesting for you, just you just need to download it and start working on it in your own infrastructure. This is in general, it's not just for the Bioxel building blocks, but in particular for the Bioxel building blocks, Jupyter Notebooks are a really good tool to starting to be familiar with the syntax of the Bioxel uh, Building Blocks library. 
also uh, it helps on learning how to build the workflows and uh, also in understanding what the workflows are doing step by step and I will show you that a little bit in the next sections uh, and also it will uh, help you in understanding how to package the whole workflow uh, using the Conda packaging system and the BioXL building blocks library. So one by one, uh, starting to be familiar with the BioXL building block syntax. Um, this slide I, I showed you in the in the previous lecture, but let me repeat that. I will repeat that today and tomorrow so that you can you know uh, save it uh, in your brain. You this is the syntax that you need to understand and this is the syntax that you are going to use in all the different building blocks for the library and is importing the module, defining inputs, outputs and properties and launching the building block. Nothing else than this. So importing the module, edit com, um, in this case, the one that generates the box, defining inputs, outputs and properties and then running, launching the building block. Uh, if we take a look a little bit more closer to this example that I was rushing through in the first lesson, you will see that you have four different building blocks connected one to the other. So the first one is downloading uh, a small molecule and is in, uh, importing the module, creating, defining inputs, outputs and properties and launching the building block. Here, the output that is generated, it's called input structure. Input structure is just a Python variable that it's a, the code of the ligand plus dot pdb. It's a string, a file in your file system. The variable in Python is called input structure and this, which is the output of the first building block is used as an input for the second building block. And the output of the second building block is used as an input for the third building block and so on and so forth. And this is how we connect uh, the different building blocks. Um, we define input outputs and properties and launch um, the building block. We are downloading a PDB file here. We are adding hydrogens here. Uh, properties for adding hydrogen with open bubble. Well, a particular pH that we can define. And then we say that the input format is PDB and the output format is MOL2. So we are converting a format of the file uh, of the file uh, that we are producing from PDB to MOL2, for example. And we are using this MOL2 here to uh, energetically minimize the hydrogens that we have recently added in the previous one. And then we parameterize in the last step uh, the molecule. But look at that. Import the module, defining inputs, outputs, and properties, and launching the building block. It's always the same. So it's a way to familiarize with, uh, with the syntax of the Bioxel building block. Uh, actually, the workflow that I have just introduced you, it's a real workflow, a real demonstration workflow that you can take a look at because it's one of the uh, workflows for the collection that you have in the workflow section in the website. It's called automatic ligand parameterization and it's doing a little bit more uh, than uh, what I have just shown you, but the, the basics is it's, are exactly the ones that you see. Okay, uh, second part, learn how to build the workflows and understand uh, what the workflow is doing and what each of the cells of the workflow is doing. Uh, for me, this is fantastic because uh, Jupyter Notebooks is not just to write code and execute code, they are also used to document the code. And here you have an example. This is uh, one particular demonstration workflow from our collection, uh, the molecular dynamics setup tutorial of a particular protein. Um, you have a summary of what the workflow is doing, the modules that are used in this <clears throat> workflow in case you want to reproduce it, uh, the auxiliary libraries that are used. This, all of this is markdown code. It's documentation for the workflow. It's not something that you can execute. It's just for you to understand what the workflow is doing. Uh, step by step, we have also documentation about what the step is doing. Here you have a PDB to GMX. If you are familiar with Gromax, you will identify this is the tool that Gromax um, uh, it has to uh, generate the topology of the system. For the ones that are not familiar, don't worry. Tomorrow you will have a session about the uh, in introduction to the Gromax <clears throat> uh, MD package. But basically here you, you see that uh, uh, we have documentation about what the cell is doing, is building the Gromax topology using a particular force field, using a particular water model, this generating these different output files, the building block that we are using is this one. You have a link. All of this information can be included in the Jupyter Notebook. And I think that is really important to uh, understand uh, uh, our biomolecular simulation workflows in particular. 
and as I was telling you before, uh, taking a look at the intermediate results in an interactive way. This is also another fantastic um, feature that the Jupyter Notebooks uh, offer. In this case, we are using NGL Viewer to uh, take a look at the protein structure in 3D. You can rotate, zoom, you can inspect the structure that you have just downloaded in the previous step. And you will see that uh, tomorrow in the live session. Not only uh, structures, but also, as I was telling before, uh, plots uh, on, like this one, for example, 2D plot of uh, the energy minimization along uh, the, ener the potential energy, sorry, along the energy minimization process in the molecular dynamic setup. Um, uh, this is the um, the workflow, the demonstration workflow that we are going to uh, um, use tomorrow in the live session. And in this one, you will see all of these examples, documentation, intermediate results, how to play with the different cells, how to modify the parameters. And you will see that in a hands-on session tomorrow. Uh, and finally, uh, Jupyter Notebooks are uh, useful also to understand how to package the whole workflow using the Conda packaging system. And uh, uh, for example, what you can do to start working on a workflow using the Bioxel building blocks library is to create a Conda environment, a new Conda environment like this. Uh, you just give it a name and a version of Python and it will create this environment, closed environment, remember from the first uh, lecture in your own computer. Then you activate this environment, so you go inside this environment, and now you are able to execute everything uh, with all the dependencies that are installed in this particular environment. We don't have any now, but we can type conda install uh, with this particular, for example, conda package by UVB Chemistry. It will install all these, all the dependencies that uh, the by UVB Chemistry module needs inside this particular environment, and then you can run Jupyter Notebook and you will be able to start using all the building blocks that are contained in this particular module. It's as easy as that. Remember that for all the different modules that we have in the library, you have the Bioconda package that you can go there and you can uh, explore the name of the Bioconda package and you can run Conda install in your own environment so that all the dependencies needed for all the different modules will be installed automatically. Those are all the packages that we have. If you just type uh, in the search um, input form by UVB, you will have, you will uh, retrieve all the different modules available in the Conda packages related to the Bioxel building blocks library. But even more important than that, <clears throat> and I was, as I was telling you before, you can wrap the whole workflow uh, using Conda packaging, packaging system. And for that, we are using this environment.yaml syntax. It's just one single file, a YAML formatted file, where you can tell Conda, this is the name of my environment that I want. Those are the channels where uh, I have all the different um, modules. In this case, we are using Bioconda and Conda Forge. And the dependencies that my workflow have are the Bioxel input output to download we are using the automatic ligand parameterization example that I was showing before, input output to download the small molecule, chemistry to add hydrogens, <clears throat> minimize the hydrogens and parameterize the system, and then just three auxiliary ones that, it, that are always there, but the important ones are these ones. And with this environment.yaml file, you can run something like conda environment create using this environment.yaml and all the dependencies for all the modules will be installed directly in this new environment that is called like this name here that you can modify. With this and with these lines here, you can reproduce any workflow that you want using the Bioxel building blocks. And this is something that we are going to see tomorrow, but uh, look at that and I'm sure that you will understand uh, six different lines, three, six, seven different lines. So git clone of the uh, of the repository in GitHub having all the information, the Jupyter Notebook, which is the workflow. You clone the workflow in your own machine. You go to the folder that is created. You create the environment, the Conda environment. You activate the environment. Then you just enable a couple of uh, extensions just to see widgets and to see the, to be able to see uh, the, the interactive um, intermediate results, in particular the structures. 
and then you run the Jupyter notebook with the notebook that is contained inside the Git repo. Seven lines to reproduce one particular workflow, but seven lines to reproduce any workflow that you want from the, the list of demonstration workflows or from a workflow that you uh, built using the BioExcel building blocks. As easy as that. Okay, um, there's also the opportunity for you to start the workflows, not just downloading the information in your machine, installing all the conda environment in your machine, but just going to a remote execution uh, um, URL. This is a, a, an online uh, tool that you can just uh, um, write the GitHub repo where the notebook is, and it will automatically go and identify the environment.yaml file, which is giving all the information that it needs to install all the dependencies and to run the Jupyter notebook, and it, it will do it for you completely free and online. The only thing is that this binder is completely open to everybody, so you need to compete with the rest of the people. Sometimes uh, there is no computational resources behind that because all of them are, you know, busy. And for that, we developed our own binder, binder for the BioXL building blocks, thanks to our partners in MBL EBI. <clears throat> and with that, you just need to sign in with your GitHub account and you will be able to execute uh, any of the demonstration workflows from the, uh, from the website in this BioXL building blocks binder. And I, I invite you to take a look at the different demonstration workflows, click on execute in binder and see what you can do because it actually um, gives you the opportunity to play with the Jupyter notebooks and with the workflows directly without the need of installing anything in your own computer. Okay, uh, I hope that I have convinced you about the importance of the Jupyter notebook to start uh, with the BioXL building blocks library, uh, understand the syntax, start playing with the workflow, start uh, uh, developing your own workflows. But now, BioXL building blocks workflows, uh, how can you start uh, a workflow basically? I, have, I think that the, using the Jupyter notebooks, of course, I think that you have two different ways uh, and both of them are uh, important, but one of them is uh, for me, the first one and the most easy one. And it's just cloning an existing tutorial from the ones that you have in the demonstration list of tutorials in the website and playing with the tutorial. And actually this is what we are going to do tomorrow. Or you can go and start a new workflow from scratch. And I will uh, give you just five minutes of information um, on both of the different um, approximations. So the first one, cloning a tutorial. You have already seen that. Uh, if you go to one of the demonstration workflows in the website uh, and you go, uh, <clears throat> you scroll a little bit down in the documentation of the uh, of the Jupyter notebook, you will see in all the different demonstration workflows this uh, section which is called Conda Installation and Launch. If you reproduce this in your own machine after installing the Conda packaging system, you should be able to reproduce that in your own machine. It's as easy as that. Uh, remember, if the Conda uh, directly understands from the environment.yaml that needs to install all of these that are the uh, requirements and dependencies of the particular um, workflow. Once you have that in your computer and you run the Jupyter notebook, you can start playing with the notebook. Remember that you can also do that without installing everything in your machine, just opening it in my binder or in the BioExcel binder. Uh, you will be able to do exactly the same. Once you have the Jupyter notebook open, you can play. And that means, okay, I have a PDB code here, which is a lysozyme. <clears throat> it's a toy protein. It's easy. This is here because we know that it works in most of the, uh, most of the times with uh, really basic molecular dynamics setup uh, pipelines. But what happens if uh, I start playing not just with a lysosome, but, but uh, with a pyruvate kinase, with a, a tetramer, compli complicated tetramer like this one here? What happens if I change the PDB here? What happens if I play with a DNA instead of a protein or a protein DNA complex? And this is a really good way to start uh, identifying issues and understanding why you cannot use the same workflow for all the different structures uh, in the PDB uh, database. Um, you can also modify the building blocks. So for example, edit comp to uh, build the box, the water box surrounding the molecule. Okay, I can change the type of the box. I can uh, change cubic for octaedric and then look at the intermediate structure with NGL and see what happens, what has, what has changed. Of course, the type of the box should have changed. 
the distance to the molecule, I can change that too. If I uh, add ions, counter ions to the system, I want to neutralize the system, I can modify that and say, no, I don't want to neutralize, I can modify the concentration. It's just playing a little bit and understand how that works. Uh, you can also, of course, look at the documentation, take a look at what are the properties that you can modify and add new properties or, or just remove properties. One particular example, which is important, is this uh, MDP property. MDP is the molecular dynamics property file from Gromax. It's a pity that you have um, the session about Gromax tomorrow, but for the ones that are familiar with Gromax, uh, I'm sure that you recognize this uh, property. It's as complicated, it's, it's so that the molecular dynamics parameters or properties for a Gromax are so complicated and Gromax has many, many, many different types of properties that we have a webinar in BioExcel, a whole webinar, more than one hour, talking about different um, parameters on the MDP file. So imagine how complicated the, this, uh, this could be. You can take a look at the manual of Gromax to identify the meaning of all the different properties. But, uh, you know, in, in the BioExcel building blocks documentation, you will not find the, all the different uh, properties that you can add here. This is a particular MDP that is open for you to uh, add whatever property that you want. For example, the ensemble that you want to uh, run the simulation, MVT, MPT, the type of uh, uh, pressure algorithm that you want to use or the temperature algorithm, all of this information can be uh, just placed here. But you need to know about the MDP file. Okay, more easy things you can modify here. For example, I want to extract the potential energy from an analysis of energy, but I, I can just write here more uh, terms such as temperature, pressure. I want to extract all of this information from the Gromax energy uh, execution. So just modifying the building blocks and playing a little bit. And finally, you can also add building blocks. If you start to feel comfortable with the different, with the syntax in the BioExcel building blocks, you can uh, add a particular <clears throat> simulated annealing equilibration, for example, or you can add a mutation uh, in the EMD setup process before starting the setup. You can mutate one uh, uh, residue of the protein and see what happens after that. So I, I recommend to play a little bit with the Jupyter Notebooks. It's a very good way to start understanding <clears throat> how to use the BioExcel building blocks. Okay, so second uh, approach is starting uh, a generation of a workflow from scratch. And as uh, I was saying you before, I was telling you before, you need a Conda environment for that. Uh, but to identify first, which are the building blocks that you need, you need to think about the workflow. For example, I'm thinking about the automatic uh, small molecule parameterization. This is a small molecule, usually a ligand. I wrote in the table that we have in the website, for example, ligand in the text file, and I find a building block that is called ligand, which is a wrapper for downloading a PDB ligand. Okay, I will start with this one. I click on ligand here, and it will uh, it will open for me the documentation uh, of the ligand building block. In the ligand building block, you have the parameters that you can uh, or you must uh, write. So output PDB, which is mandatory, and then the properties, which are optional. Uh, output, of course, is the PDB that will be written in your file path. Ligand code is the code for the PDB that you want to download. And this is uh, different APIs that you can use to download. But you have an example here. So you can just copy paste the example into the Jupyter Notebook after installing the Conda uh, package that contains the this Ligand uh, building block, which is the BioExcel building block, BioBB. Bio IO of input output. If you uh, run a Conda install of this in your environment and then you can run the building block in your Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the syntax is here and you can just copy paste this as easy as that. And you, uh, you have the first building block and you start uh, building new ones one after the, the other. Same process for the rest of the building block. So you identify that you need to add a box, edit conf, you click on edit conf and you go to the uh, documentation page. You have an input growth path and output growth path that you need to define. We define the output growth path here, which is this one here. And we use as an input the output of the previous building block and then all the properties that you can define. So you can use distance to molecule, box type, center molecule, and you start populating the properties dictionary. 
and you run. And the same, for example, for the uh, block on PMX free energy to mutate uh, uh, the, the residue. In this case, this is just an example to tell you that uh, we can also, we are compatible in using Docker containers, but this is for another uh, session. We don't have time for that now. Okay, in the hands-on session tomorrow, we are going to do exactly that. Open a Jupyter Notebook, play with the notebook, uh, try to go from the beginning to the end, uh, understanding the different cells, the different steps of the workflow, which are basically splitting the protein and the ligand from a PDB file that we download uh, using the PDB API, parameterize the small molecule, the ligand, obtain the protein topology, so in two different parts, and after that joining the protein and the ligand topologies and the structures, and then running a typical basic molecular dynamic setup, which is minimizing the energy of the system, equilibrating the energy, and uh, ending the, the <clears throat> finishing the workflow with a non-restrained short molecular dynamics. And after that, uh, small pieces of quality check that we always run, which is um, the root mean square deviation and the radius of gyration on the frames that are that will be generated by the, by the short molecular dynamics. Okay, <clears throat> before <clears throat> finishing the this uh, introduction um, uh, lecture, let me tell you a little bit about the common line usage of the BioExcel building blocks, which is the approximation that we use for the success story that I presented in the previous lecture. Um, you can do that in different ways. So the first one and the, the easiest way is from the Jupyter notebook that you have already created, you have your workflow there, you can download the workflow in Python format, just a file, uh, download as Python format, and it will generate a Python code in your system that you can then run. And these advantages of this is that, the, of course, you, you lose the graphical cells, because you are now going command line way uh, and you lose interactivity, but you have a great advantage and is that you are gaining high throughput. So you are gaining automation and repetition. You can run that as many times as you want. Problem to run that, that uh, workflow as many times as you want, that if you want to modify the parameters for a certain step, just for example, the input file, you need to modify the Python code or adapt the Python code and the Python script. So for that, what we thought is that uh, for a command line execution of the building blocks, we needed another approximation. And for that, we uh, developed a, a new uh, idea that is um, divide, split the script, the workflow script, which is the Python code, the loops, the conditionals, the logic behind the workflow, <clears throat> and the workflow parameters, which are the inputs and outputs of the parameter, the dependencies between the different building blocks. So the output of the first one is the input of the second one, etc., and all the parameters and the properties and global inputs of the workflow and global parameters of the workflow. All of that will be in a YAML, a separated YAML formatted file, whereas the Python script will be in a separated Python script, the workflow script. Um, if you want to know more about that, just please take a look at the tutorial that you will find in the website that is called Command Line Workflows. And here we have all uh, an extended documentation about how to run the workflows, how to prepare and run the workflows using the BioXL building blocks library in a common line way, using two different files, the script and the uh, workflow parameters. We are not going to see that in the in the summer school because we don't have time, but uh, if after the hands-on session you think that you are interested in that and this tool is uh, uh, suited for you, just uh, please be in contact with us and we can help you in running your workflows in a common line way. Okay, as a summary, <clears throat> we have seen how to build, deploy, and run biomolecular uh, simulation workflows. We have seen that it is really easy with the BioXL building blocks. I hope that now you understand the syntax that we are going to use tomorrow in the live session. Uh, we need to create a content environment or to define the content environment that you need, that we need, the workflow needs in a, a YAML file. Um, use the syntax to uh, build the workflow and connecting the building blocks. Um, that's all. Jupyter Notebook Graphical User Interface is a really good tool to start playing the, with the BioXL building blocks. I hope that you also are, agree with me on that now. Um, 
it's really easy to package the whole workflow in a Conda environment and export the workflow, and it is really good for reproducibility. So now you start thinking about what you can do with the, your biomolecular simulation workflows and how you can export that, uh, share that with your colleagues, with the scientific community if you want. Um, and also how to export the workflow to command line for high throughput executions uh, that uh, I have just briefly explained to you that there's a way to do that, but we can talk about that more if you are interested. So remember, tomorrow we have the live session. Uh, we will be uh, with Pau and Janice there that will be monitoring the chat with all the questions that you uh, find. Uh, remember, we will go into run the protein small molecule uh, complex molecular dynamics setup. Uh, in the morning, tomorrow you will have the lectures uh, on Gromax introduction. So here we will uh, also use Gromax. So I am, I'm sure that you will be already familiar with the Gromax syntax. So we will be able to, in just a couple of hours, go from the uh, beginning to the end of the, of the tutorial. And we will include the query and answer session there. So please write down all the queries that you have, all the doubts, uh, and also suggestions or feedback from this uh, introductory lecture. Uh, and just uh, ask us uh, in the session tomorrow before starting uh, with the hands-on. And with that, thank you all for participating in the Biox of Summer School. I hope that we, we will see you tomorrow and we will be able to run the hands-on session on the Jupyter Notebook and the Biox Building Blocks Library. Thank you.